We'll start, though, with the England rugby team, who are counting down to their World Cup opener against Argentina tomorrow in sunny Marseille. We can join Eleanor Roper, who was at training for us not long ago. Yes, welcome back to Marseille, where you can see we're now inside the stadium where England will play Argentina on Saturday night in front of 67,000 fans. Now, if I step out the way, you'll be able to see the England team taking to the pitch behind us. It's the first time that they've come to the stadium here, so a chance to familiarise themselves with the pitch, have a look around. Um, they tend to do, before a game, a bit of a huddle. Everyone gets together. They have a bit of a walk around. Um, you can see them chucking the ball around a bit. They're not going to work up a sweat or, or do anything too technical, but a chance to have a look at the stadium for the first time ahead of what is a huge game for England tomorrow. Their first game in their World Cup group and also the toughest, for sure, in Argentina. Um, and a, a huge moment for England following what's been a, a disappointing Six Nations, a disappointing summer series and a pretty frustrating time as well. And as much as we saw um, not just the poor results, but also England captain Owen Farrell banned, Billy Vanapola banned, a number of injuries. Um, but there is some good news on the on the injury front for England fans, notably Tom Curry, who returns to the starting side tomorrow. He's not played since May, but uh, Borthwick naming him in the starting side to take on Argentina. Um, he missed all of the, the summer warm-ups, but he's fit. He's ready to go again. But I think the headline selection has to be Alex Mitchell, the scrum half, who comes in to start at nine tomorrow, ahead of Ben Youngs, ahead of Danny Kerr, um, in what is only his second England start in, as I mentioned, what is a huge, huge game for England. We heard from Borthwick yesterday. We heard from... Current captain Courtney Laws and what will be his 101st England cap. We also heard from Mauro Toje, who was asked by a French journalist, how can you be so confident given how badly things have been going for England? Well, he said, we're confident because we know each other. We know how good we can be. And he, he has said that, I genuinely believe that come Argentina on Saturday night, we will take a big step forward. He says there's a real sense of optimism in this side, a real sense of belief in, ter in terms of what they can do and in terms of where they can take it. But there is no doubt that this is a huge test. Steve Borthwick saying yesterday that Argentina will provide a stern, stern test for this England side. And it's one he's hoping his side will rise to. We know there's a lot of experience in this side. Half of the 33 played back in 2019 when England reached a World Cup final. They'll be hoping to kick things off on a positive note tomorrow when they take off uh, take on Argentina here in Marseille. That's 9 p.m. local time, 8 o'clock back home in the UK. Thank you, Ellie. Really looking forward to this getting underway. And the training is finished. That was a few minutes ago. These are live pictures we're seeing now as we take you to the press conference with three of the England team, starting with scrum half uh, Alex Mitchell. I remember that because I must have had many great goals. Um, yeah, obviously top we do it. Was it, yeah. was it top bins? Yeah. Classic. Um, <laughs> no, obviously we like to have a lot of fun during training and, and, and uh, try and keep the mood up. And yeah, it's been fantastic what the coaches do. So. Um, and then when we switch on, obviously into rugby and we uh, power through that. So, yeah, it's been good. Uh, how have you kind of kept yourself going over the last few years when maybe you've been on the edges of squads and not quite getting the recognition that maybe a club four might have deserved? What's kind of kept you coming back and kept going? And obviously missed out on the squad this time, but your tenacity, you've made it back now. So what's been your process over that last few years? Yeah, I think just appreciate you're still in a, a really good position. You're still... Um, I mean, getting paid to, to play the sport you love and, and you're not far off. The whole time you're not far off, you're in and out of camps and, and you're still getting opportunities. So um, you can't get too downheartened on it and just got to keep your head up and, and try to push forward and, and, and your chance will come. So, yeah, that's what I focused on. Can I ask you, which as well, um, obviously it's a special day for lots of these guys, first World Cup. Are you doing anything special tonight? to present shirts and are coming in to... Uh, the, the, players, the players have a meeting um, usually the night before a game, so um, I'm sure they'll, they'll mark it, but uh, every test match is special. But um, the impressive thing about this group is how, how well they've done in the last couple of weeks, when, especially now we've got to France in terms of uh, they look like the young group that they are, that they're relishing the chance to get out there and not, um, not too nervous about doing it. I'm sure they'll, they'll come, but... Their attitude of how they've got stuck into it and how they uh, how they look at the game is uh, is refreshing. Is, is your message just sort of no regrets, throw everything at it, 
you going to get one shot in the World Cup? Yeah, definitely. I think um, when you played as long as I did and you, you look back, you always tend to look back on the regrets. Um, and if, if there's anything that you can impart on them, it would be that um, you don't regret um, playing into it, you don't regret ever giving your best and you don't regret um, enjoying it. You regret the other stuff when you've held back. So, yeah, we don't want to hold back. Thanks, Will. Thanks, Richard. Uh, the next three questions will be here. Frankie, number two, number three, and number four at the back. Yeah, for Richard and Joe, um, we talk a lot about pressure. Can you describe pressure, what it really means? What it means to you personally? Is it just pressure? What is it towards it? Um, oh, pressure, I think it means different things to different people. Um, for the coaches, it'll mean something different to the players. For the, for the coaches, it is about us taking as much off the players as possible. It's giving them as much certainty, uh, confidence and belief that they've done the work, that they've got the right plan so that they can just go out and pour themselves into this performance. So people handle it in all different ways. I know I had a good chat with Joe about how he handles it. He's, he's played... Um, his best would be in big games, so he he, he knows how to handle it um, and comes out smiling on the back end of it. But I'll let Joe I'll let Joe pick up because there's not many better than him in, in that situation. Yeah, for me it's um, it's all about that like, relieving pressure. So um, just going out with a smile on my face, like like we said. Um, and yeah, I think there's a lot of boys in the squad who who are similar in that in that sense. So yeah, we're all excited for it. Yeah, uh, hi to both Joe and Alex. Have you? Got a message to the fans in the stadium, in the city, and back home, some of whom may not be entirely confident after the last few weeks. Have you got a message to them, to what to expect from you, and how, how much you care about winning these, this game and, and doing well in this tournament? Um, yeah, I think it's massive. Obviously, the sport means the world to us. Um, I mean, recently I've had a lot of positive messages, which is, which is huge, and... Um, yeah, it means the world and it, and it gets us going. You're the 16th man, so yeah, keep the support coming and um, we really appreciate it. Yeah. yeah, same as what Alex said, really. Um, just, yeah, thank you to everyone that supported us and we're looking forward to seeing everyone uh, out here in Marseille. Richard mentioned there, you know, just give it everything. Has that been the message from, from Steve as well? Just, to, you know, go out there and, and give them hell, as it were. You just throw yourselves into this, into this game. Yeah, well, I mean, we've talked so much about um, how big a World Cup is and, and for a lot of us, it's our first time. And, um, and it goes back to the pressure kind of thing. They've tried to um, create an environment where, it's, uh, where there's a lot less pressure and it's just about going and expressing yourself and, um, and yeah, just showing what we can do as a group. So, yeah, we're all, um, we're all on board with it and we're all excited. Richard, Thank you. Duncan, is, there, is there a determination to prove a few people wrong tomorrow, given the expectations outside of the squad? Yeah, I don't, I don't know if I'm too interested in expectations outside the squad, I'm being honest. That's been the label that has a few times, and um, I think you've got to understand that um, this squad is incredibly tight and determined. Whether that is from the outside or within, that is that has always been there. Um, do they do, does the expectation that Argentina may be going as favourites, or that um, what other people expect? It makes no difference to us. Like we are incredibly determined to go out and give the absolute best of us. And the two boys have eloquently said around what that looks like for them, which is smile on your face, go out there, enjoy it, um, put your game on the field. Uh, and it's our job as coaches to give them some sort of framework that they feel like they can go out there and do that best of the ability. But as I said, they've been incredibly impressive. Um, you know, young members of the group just look like they're excited and ready to go. Thank you. Yep. Uh, hi, uh, Mitchell, it's Royce's question for Joe. Uh, you've had a similar kind of unexpected route here. Can you also talk to us about the last year or so, how you probably thought your England career was maybe not over, but maybe foreshortened, and suddenly you're here starting uh, the first World Cup match. Just talk to us about that last year or so. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a strange one, obviously. Um, I was, a year ago, I was out in the mix uh, completely. Um, obviously played in, the, in Australia, and then after that, I was out of it. So... Um, yeah, I was so pleased when when um, when Steve selected me in the Six Nations squad, and I feel the more I've been in the squad, the more confident I've got, and um, I feel especially going into uh, these warm-up games and um, and then starting this, I feel like I'm, I'm at my best. So I'm really really pleased. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Joe, you are going to have in front uh, tomorrow uh, Santiago Chocobares and, and Lucio Sinti. What do you know about them, and what do you expect about the uh, the speed of the game of Argentina? Yeah, I think they're going to come pretty fast. Obviously, there's a few boys in the Argentinian backline who we've seen a lot in the Premiership. 
So to play against them in the international level will be be another big challenge. So yeah, for us, um, it's about you know it's about shutting them down and not letting them get into their game. And for us, it's about it's about getting onto our game and um, and playing from there.